Hi, in this episode of Prophecy 101, we're talking about a question that helps us obey the biblical imperative not to t treat prophecy with contempt, but to test everything and hold on to what is good. Over the course of this series, we'll discuss a number of important questions to consider when testing prophecy. We keep in mind that the broader perspective of is covenant considerations and that prophetic messages in scripture are mostly focused on covenant. God is mostly speaking either to bring people into covenant or to remind people of his covenant promises and stipulations. In the context of the new covenant in Christ's blood, this means pointing people to Jesus and declaring or reminding of the promises, the blessings, and the behavioral expectations we have in Jesus. Thus, the gift of prophecy should encourage and support the Great Commission tasks of baptizing and teaching people to obey everything Christ commanded. There is a Redeemer, Jesus God's own Son, precious Lamb of God, Messiah, Holy One. Scripture contains many examples of false prophecy and many warnings about false prophets and false prophecy. The main New Testament test for false prophets focuses on the fruit of their lives. Is their life more characterized by the fruit of the Holy Spirit or by the desires of the sinful nature described in Galatians chapter 5? The New Testament also reminds us that the Old Testament was not primarily written for ancient Israel, but rather as examples to us on whom the fulfillment of the ages has come. So, while the specific stipulations of the Mosaic Covenant are no longer applicable, the spiritual principles for testing prophecy contain tremendous wisdom and should be carefully studied and applied. In his lamentation over the destruction of Jerusalem, the prophet Jeremiah wrote, the visions of your prophets were false and worthless. They did not expose your sin to ward off your captivity. The prophecies they gave you were false and misleading. During his life and ministry, Jeremiah often preached and prophesied to encourage his audience toward repentance and toward a return of covenant stipulations. Notably, Jeremiah confronted the worship of Baal and Asherah and the worship of the Queen of Heaven. He warned of serious captivity and long-term consequences if the kings and priests and the people of the land maintained their stubborn refusal to repent. The people of Judah and Jerusalem had a bad habit of persecuting God's servants whose prophecies exposed their sin and called them to repentance. At the same time, they rewarded people whose prophecies ignored sin and prophesied good things. The prophet Micah observed, if a liar and deceiver comes and says, I will prophesy for you plenty of wine and beer, that would be just the prophet for these people. The false prophets in Judah and Jerusalem were complicit when the people threw off Jeremiah's rebuke for men who committed adultery and thronged to the houses of prostitutes. Jeremiah confronts them saying, they have lied about the Lord. They said he will do nothing. No harm will come to us. We will never see sword or famine. The prophets are but wind, and the word is not in them. Through Jeremiah, God confronts the lying prophets who refuse to hear his word and confront sin. He says, concerning the prophets, My heart is broken within me. 
all my bones tremble. I am like a drunken man, like a strong man overcome by wine because of the Lord and his holy words. The land is full of adulterers. Because of the curse, the land lies parched and the pastures in the wilderness are withered. The prophets follow an evil course and use their power unjustly. Both prophet and priest are godless. Even in my temple, I find their wickedness, declares the Lord. Therefore, their path will become slippery. They will be banished to darkness, and there they will fall. I will bring disaster on them in the year they are punished, declares the Lord. Among the prophets of Samaria, I saw this repulsive thing. They prophesied by Baal and led my people Israel astray. And among the prophets of Jerusalem, I have seen something horrible. They commit adultery and they live a lie. They strengthen the hands of evildoers so that not one of them turns from their wickedness. They are all like Sodom to me. The people of Jerusalem are like Gomorrah. Therefore, this is what the Lord Almighty says concerning the prophets. I will make them eat bitter food and drink poisoned water. Because the prophets of Jerusalem, ungodliness has spread throughout the land. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Do not listen to what the prophets are prophesying to you. They fill you with false hopes. They speak visions from their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord. They keep saying to those who despise me, the Lord says, you will have peace. And to all who follow the stubbornness of their hearts, they say, no harm will come to you. But which of them has stood in the counsel of the Lord to see or to hear his word? Who has listened and heard his word? See, the storm of the Lord will burst out in wrath, a whirlwind swirling down on the heads of the wicked. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he fully accomplishes the purposes of his heart. In days to come, you will clearly understand, I did not send these prophets, yet they have run with their message. I did not speak to them, yet they have prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel, they would have proclaimed my words to my people and would have turned them from their evil ways and from their evil deeds. Am I only a God nearby, declares the Lord, and not a God far away? Who can hide in secret places so that I cannot see them, declares the Lord. Do I not fill heaven and earth, declares the Lord. I have heard what the prophets say who prophesy lies in my name. They say, I had a dream, I had a dream. How long will this continue in the hearts of these lying prophets who prophesy the delusions of their own minds? They think the dreams they tell one another will make my people forget my name just as their ancestors forgot about my name through Baal worship. Let the prophet who has a dream recount the dream, but the, let the one who has my word speak it faithfully. For what has straw to do with grain, declares the Lord. Is my word not like a fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock to pieces? The New Testament tells us to eagerly desire the greater gifts, especially the gift of prophecy. But it is not all cherry blossoms and apple pie. Yes, we often get to announce covenant promises and blessings, but the Holy Spirit is still in the business of speaking frankly to sin and calling people to repentance. Servants who stand in God's counsel are called to deliver his word accurately. The good life is the land where the big grapes grow, milk and honey flow. From the morning till the night, everybody's singing to Jesus. 
Yeah, it's a good life is the land where the big grapes grow, milk and honey flow. From the morning till the night, everybody's singing to Jesus. Jesus, la 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 la